If you're a world traveler on your way to Korea, you might be in for a bit of a culture shock. For starters, it's the only country where you can be simultaneously addicted to K-pop, K-dramas, and kimchi. From eating live octopus to trying out traditional Korean dance, here are 20 things that can't be seen anywhere but in Korea. Drinking in Korea Every country has a solid drinking culture, and South Koreans are practically known for it. Their love of drinking and their ability to have a good time while doing so really clashes with their public image, but you might be surprised at just how much influence they have over your own bar experiences. The drinking culture is often seen as a way to let loose and socialize with friends and colleagues. One of the best parts of when people go out drinking in South Korea is that they often enjoy a variety of tasty foods to accompany their drinks, such as fried chicken, pork belly, and spicy rice cakes. Sounds like a delicious combination. In fact, it's common for groups to order a bunch of different dishes to share and enjoy together. Soju, the most popular drink in South Korea, is often referred to as Korean vodka due to its high alcohol content. But unlike vodka, soju has a slightly sweet taste that makes it smoother to drink, which could be seen as a blessing or a curse depending on how you look at it. Soju is also quite affordable, with a bottle costing only a few dollars at most convenience stores, making it the drink of choice for many who've tried it. Despite the hierarchical nature of South Korean society, drinking can be a great equalizer, as people of all ages and backgrounds can come together to enjoy a drink and some good company. And of course, the morning after a night of drinking is often filled with humorous stories and memories that people can laugh about together after they deal with the hangover, of course. Now let's get ready for today's Missing Topic. For today's Missing Topic, we're taking a look at a typical drinking spot for people who like milk tea and boba, or tapioca balls if you're not familiar with the concept. But something else seems out of place here. Can you spot what it is? Yeah, we're talking about the suspiciously large snake-looking akanda tail poking out of these cultured individual gowns. While the gowns could be traditional Korean hanbos, the winding tails protruding from beneath them are definitely out of the ordinary. But what exactly are they? Did a couple of snake-human hybrids make their way into public for a sweet drink? Or is it just a fun-loving duo cosplaying at a nearby convention? If it is a costume, those are some pretty realistic details. But someone on the scene said they saw the tails move around like they had a life of their own. That's some advanced and probably expensive technology if you're just going to take it out for a casual drink. So maybe these tails really are more than meets the eye. The only thing we truly know for sure is that they attracted some major attention. So what do you guys think their story is? Let us know if you say they're real snake tails or just some kind of public hoax. Comment below with the hashtag missing topic and we'll get this mystery solved for sure. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Food fighting back. Be prepared for some culture shock if you like your food cooked and well, not alive. But there are some people in South Korea and even Japan that apparently enjoy raw octopus. And by raw, we mean while it's still moving. And while it might sound crazy to us, to others it's considered a delicacy. However, before you start chewing on a tentacle, you should know there's a risk involved. Not only could the octopus fight back, but it could also be a major choking hazard. The suckers on their arms could stick to the inside of your throat, for example, and that's just the start. While it's not at the top of the list for seafood poisoning risk, one South Korean woman couldn't survive the dish after suffocating and collapsing 16 days after eating a live octopus. Her boyfriend was even convicted on murder charges although he eventually got the conviction overturned. That's pretty much why chefs like Kim Sang-jin have to be careful when preparing live octopus for customers. You first have to squeeze the tentacles downwards to remove the mucus, which isn't very nice to eat. But while eating live octopus is good for your blood sugar levels because of the raw taurin, the tentacles can stick to your mouth, which can feel kind of strange. To avoid choking, the octopus has to be cut into small pieces. So while some people might enjoy the thrill of eating a live creature, it's important to be aware of the risks and to take precautions. And if you're not into the idea, you're probably better off sticking to regular, 
unalive types of food, looking like the crowd. This may come as a surprise to some people, but South Korea is widely known for its love of plastic surgery, probably more than most other countries. In fact, they're so into it that they've earned the title of world's plastic surgery capital, with almost one million procedures a year. That's a lot of nips and tucks. Apparently, the most popular surgery in Korea is the double eyelid surgery, where surgeons add a crease in the patient's eyelid to make the eye look bigger. It's kind of like putting curtains on a window to make the whole thing look larger than it really is. The other popular procedures are nose jobs and glutathione injections that slow pigmentation and skin tone. There's been some controversy with many people criticizing Koreans for wanting to look more Caucasian or white. But Alfred Happy Ling, a Seoul-based YouTuber with We Fancy, a channel that examines Korean culture, doesn't seem to buy it. He thinks it's just Western arrogance and Eurocentrism. Koreans aren't trying to look like Westerners, they just want to look like their best selves, according to him. He went on to say that pale skin has always been a standard of beauty in East Asia because it suggests that you don't have to work outside in the sun. And Koreans want a different type of nose bridge and smaller lips than Westerners. It's all about achieving specifically Korean beauty standards, not Western. So, if you ever go to South Korea and notice that everyone looks like they've just stepped out of a plastic surgeon's office, don't worry, they're just trying to be the most beautiful versions of themselves. And who knows, maybe one day we'll all be sporting double eyelids and smaller lips. Probably not, but still. Pregnancy Perks Korea has been working on building some support for the pregnant citizens and it started to take effect in the capital of Seoul. Recently, a transportation subsidy of 700,000 KRW, or roughly around 488 US dollars, was presented to pregnant women from multicultural families. The announcement came as a relief to foreign pregnant women who have been living in Seoul for more than six months. This has been taken as great news for those that were starting to feel like they were carrying a heavy load, not just from their pregnancy, but also from the burden of transportation costs. With this new subsidy, they can now breathe a sigh of relief and enjoy a comfortable ride on the bus without breaking their budgets. This is in addition to a voucher that's already been distributed to naturally born citizens, finally giving many multicultural families a benefit that they could only hear about and never take advantage of. With this subsidy, Seoul is showing that it values the health and well-being of its pregnant residents, no matter what their cultural background is, and it's heartening to see the city ensuring that this support continues without disruption. Kudos to Assistant Seoul Mayor Kim Sun Soon and the Women and Family Policy Office for championing this cause. A different kind of park. Have you ever heard of the oil tank culture park in Seoul? It's not just any ordinary park, it's a unique cultural space that's been transformed from a crude oil storage facility into a creative hub. The park covers an area of approximately 30,000 square meters and has six large oil tanks that have been repurposed into exhibition halls performance spaces, and even a library. All of the visitors that stop by are able to explore the park and marvel at the tank's industrial architecture, which has somehow been seamlessly blended into modern design elements that give it a fresh new take. The Oil Tank Culture Park is a perfect example of Seoul's commitment to preserving its industrial heritage while promoting creativity and innovation in a totally unique way. It's a one-of-a-kind destination that offers visitors a glimpse into the city's past while showcasing its proud and artistic future. The park also hosts a wide variety of cultural events spread throughout the year, from contemporary art exhibitions to raging music festivals. And boy, can the locals party! Visitors also have the luxury to enjoy the park's tranquil green spaces, take a stroll along the Han River, and admire the city skyline from a whole new perspective. Whether you're an art enthusiast or simply looking for a unique outdoor experience, the Oil Tank Culture Park has something fun for everyone. So why not add it to your list of must-visit places in Seoul? You won't regret it. Built Different There are a lot of things in South Korea that really stand out compared to other major countries in the world, but one that stands out has got to be their architectural style. For starters, it's a style that's all about harmony between nature and general human living. You can't just slap some concrete together and call it a day in this country. For the South Korean architect, it's all about careful planning and a keen eye for balance. 
The buildings have a certain elegance and beauty that can't be found in just any old skyscraper. But it's not just about the pretty looks. Korean architecture is also practical. You won't find any buildings that just look cool but are totally useless. These buildings are built to last and to be functional. From the layout to the materials, everything is carefully chosen to ensure that the building will stand strong for years to come. One of the most distinctive features is the use of curved roof tiles, known as giwa, which give buildings a gentle, flowing appearance. They're all about those curved lines and that sloping style. It's like the roof is giving you a little wave as you walk by. Another feature is the use of wood as a primary material in construction, which is particularly notable in traditional Hanok houses. Their use of wood not only creates a warm and inviting atmosphere, but also helps buildings mesh seamlessly into the natural surroundings. So there you have it. Korean architecture is a blend of beauty and practicality, with a focus on nature and balance. These elements combine to create buildings that are not only beautiful and functional, but also deeply connected to the culture and history of Korea. Dressing for the Times Ah, the Hanbo, a traditional Korean dress that's beloved by locals and foreigners alike. It's kind of like the fashion equivalent of kimchi. It can work for almost any occasion. So what's the deal with hanbos? First things first, the hanbo is not just any old piece of clothing. It's a representation of Korean culture and history, and it's been around for centuries. You can sort of think of it like a time machine you can wear. Now hanbos come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Some are adorned with intricate embroidery, while others are more simple and elegant instead. They're often worn during special occasions, such as weddings or holidays, but you can also see them on display in museums. But here's the best part. Similar to the Japanese kimono, hanbos are incredibly comfortable. You might think that such a fancy dress would be stuffy and constricting, but it's actually quite the opposite. The fabric is light and breathable, which makes it perfect for swishing around and twirling on the dance floor. Plus, hanbos are versatile. You can dress them up with a fancy jewelry and high heels or go for a more casual look with flats and a denim jacket. They're perfect for any occasion, whether you're attending a formal event or just hanging out with friends. But hold on, there's more. They also have a practical purpose. The flowing lines and loose fit make them ideal for hot and humid Korean summers. And because they're made from natural materials like silk and cotton, they're eco-friendly too. They're really the perfect blend of style, comfort, and cultural significance. They're a true icon of Korean fashion. And once you try one on, you'll never want to take it off. Diving for a cause You can find powerful groups of independent women in a number of countries, but in a small section of Jeju Island off of South Korea are the Hinyo, a group of extraordinary women known for their free diving skills. These master divers can hold their breath for several minutes and dive to incredible depths to collect seafood such as abalone, octopus, and sea urchin. They're often referred to as Korean mermaids due to their impressive abilities and the fact that they spend a lot of time in the water. And you have been around for centuries, with some estimates suggesting that they've been diving for over a thousand years. In the past, they were the primary breadwinners for their families as their husbands were often away at sea. However, despite facing many challenges and dangers, these women have persevered and become a symbol of strength and resilience in Korean culture. In a way, you can compare their image as a Rosie the Riveter equivalent from the World War II in the United States. In addition to their incredible diving skills, they're also known for their distinctive clothing. They wear a uniform made up of a white cotton tip, black pants, and a colorful vest. The vest is usually embroidered with colorful designs and patterns that reflect the natural beauty of their island home. Their culture is an important part of Jeju Island's heritage and identity. In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in their ways of life, with many young women learning to dive and carry on this important tradition. Today, they can be seen as an inspiration to anyone who wants to overcome challenges and follow their dreams, no matter how difficult they may seem. Tea Time Traditions the Korean tea ceremony, also known as duri, is a traditional practice that involves the preparation and serving of tea in a highly ceremonial manner. For most practitioners, it's a great way to impress friends and family with impeccable manners and taste in exotic beverages. During the tea ceremony, participants sit on the floor and enjoy the tranquil ambiance while the tea is being prepared. 
The tea is typically made with loose leaf tea and is served in small, delicate cups that require careful handling to avoid spillage. The tea is often served with a variety of traditional Korean snacks, such as rice cakes, nuts, and dried fruits, making it a full sensory experience. One of the features unique to the Korean brand of tea ceremony is their use of a special tea bowl called a dalsat. The dalsat is made of clay and is heated to a high temperature before the tea is poured in, creating a delicious aroma and flavor unlike any other. The heat of the dalsat helps enhance the taste of the tea, making it even more enjoyable. Similar to other Eastern traditional practices, the Korean tea ceremony also involves a set of rules and etiquette that must be followed. As an example, participants are expected to bow to each other before and after drinking the tea, and the tea is always served with the right hand while holding the bowl with the left hand. It's a great way to practice your social skills and show off your knowledge of Korean culture. The Korean tea ceremony is the ideal way to experience the rich cultural heritage of Korea while also enjoying a delicious cup of tea. So why not give it a try and show off to your friends with some classy tea taste and impeccable manners? Tower of Tourists The In Seoul Tower is short for the Namsen Tower and it's a fairly popular tourist destination located in central Seoul, South Korea. Standing at 236 meters tall or nearly 755 feet, it offers a stunning panoramic view of the cityscape and is considered one of the most romantic spots in Korea. On top of that, the tower is also home to a variety of attractions and activities. For example, visitors can take a ride up to the tower's observatory deck via a cable car or a scenic hiking trail. Once they hit the peak, they can enjoy a breathtaking view of the city while sipping on coffee or grabbing a delicious meal at one of the tower's many restaurants. In addition to the observation deck and stores, the Insole Tower also offers some other fun things to do. Visitors can write love notes on locks and attach them to the tower's fence as a symbol of their passionate love and commitment to their partners. There's even a teddy bear museum featuring various exhibits of adorable teddy bears from around the world. And if that's not enough, the tower has a digital art exhibition that showcases colorful and intricate installations that are sure to dazzle visitors of all ages. The In Seoul Tower is a must-see attraction for anyone visiting Seoul, not only because of its stunning views, but also the wide range of fun and exciting experiences for visitors. Historical Palace If you have to see one palace in South Korea, it should probably be the Kambunkan Palace. It's a majestic wonderland filled with enough history and culture to make your head spin. Imagine stepping back in time to a world of royalty, courtiers, and ornate architecture and you're basically halfway there. If you're a fan of all things old school, then this is definitely a palace you should check out. The palace was originally built in the late 1300s, which makes it pretty darn old. But don't worry, it's been restored and renovated over the years, so it's still in great shape. You can wander through the various buildings and gardens, and even catch a traditional Korean dance performance if you're lucky. One of the coolest parts is the changing of the guard ceremony. It happens every hour on the hour, and it's like watching a scene from a historical drama come to life. The guards are decked out in traditional uniforms, complete with helmets and weapons, and they march around the palace grounds like a force to be reckoned with. If you're feeling really adventurous, you can even rent a handbow and stroll around the palace like a royal yourself. Amazing bathhouses So you're a tourist walking down the streets of Seoul tired and sweaty from a long day of sightseeing. Suddenly, you stumble upon a giant building with the words Jim Jil Bong written in bold letters. You're intrigued and decide to check it out. As you enter, you're greeted with a blast of hot air and the sound of people chatting and relaxing. You quickly realize that you've stumbled upon a Korean sauna and bathhouse, which is what Jim Jil Bong more or less means. The first thing that'll probably strike you is that everyone is wearing the same uniform of a simple cotton shirt and shorts. It may seem a bit odd at first, but it's actually quite refreshing to shed your usual attire and just blend in with the crowd. After changing, you'll head into the sauna area where you're hit with different temperatures ranging from hot to scorching. The intensity will help you sweat out all your toxins, but we can't help but wonder how the locals can handle such heat. Of course, the real highlight is the communal baths. You'll find hot and cold pools, herbal baths, and even outdoor tubs with stunning views. It's a great way to relax and unwind, 
while literally soaking in the local culture. And if you're feeling up to the challenge, you can even try out some of the quirky beauty treatments like face masks made from snail mucus or even full body scrubs with rough exfoliating mitts. Either way, next time you're in Korea, make sure to add this to your itinerary and soak up some relaxation. Cherry Blossom Festival If you're a fan of pink and pretty things, the Jinhae Cherry Blossom Festival in South Korea should be on your must-to-do list. Every year, usually in late March or early April, the streets and parks of Jinhae are transformed into a dazzling display of cherry blossoms, attracting visitors from all over the world. The bees love the cherry blossoms too, so watch out for those little guys while you're snapping away at the dazzling scenery. Aside from bee dodging, the festival offers plenty of other activities and sights to enjoy. You can stroll through Yaojetsun Stream, which is famous for its picturesque cherry blossom tunnel, or head to the Jeongwa Station, where the train tracks are framed by rows of blooming trees. You can even hop on a train for a cherry blossom-themed ride through the countryside. But the festival isn't just about pretty flowers. There's plenty of food and entertainment to enjoy too. You can sample local delicacies like cherry blossom rice cakes or watch traditional performances like drumming and dance shows. And of course, no festival in Korea is complete without a little bit of K-pop, so you might catch a performance by your favorite idol if you're in the right place at the right time. The Jinhae Cherry Blossom Festival really is a feast for the senses, from the beautiful sights to the delicious smells and lively sounds. Just don't forget to pack your allergy medication if you're prone to sneezing. Seoul's Noriangjin Fish Market is a seafood lover's paradise, offering an endless array of lively seafood that's sure to satisfy any fish food lover. The market is a bustling hub of activity with vendors yelling out their prices and customers bartering for the best deals. Visitors can choose from a wide range of sea dishes, including live octopus, fresh shrimp, and succulent crab. If you're feeling seaworthy yourself, you can try some of the more exotic offerings, like sea squirts or sea cucumbers. Don't worry if you have no idea how to prepare these dishes of culture. Many of the vendors offer to clean and set them for you on the spot. Once you've selected your seafood, just head over to one of the many restaurants located on the upper floor of the market. Once you're there, you can enjoy your freshly caught meal from sashimi to grilled. And once you're done there, take a stroll around the market and you'll see all kinds of interesting sights, from the colorful displays of seafood to the hard-working vendors and bustling crowds of customers. So, whether you're a seafood fanatic or just looking for a unique cultural experience, this fish market should satisfy your seafood cravings. Traditional Dancing Korean traditional dances are a lively and colorful celebration of the country's cultural heritage, showcasing a range of emotions and themes from happiness and love to sadness and melancholy. One fan favorite is a bukum chun or fan dance where performers don brightly colored hanbos and use gorgeous fans to create stunning patterns and movements. It's like watching nature come to life with blooming flowers and fluttering butterflies. Another popular dance is the Dance of Great Peace, which is performed by dancers dressed in elegant white robes with long sleeves. It's all about graceful, flowing movements and is often seen as important ceremonies and events. The Saupuri dance is another breathtaking performance, telling the story of a woman's journey to overcome negative emotions through powerful and emotional movements. With so many options like the drum dance, circle dance, and monk dance, traditional Korean dances have something for everyone. It's a beautiful way to honor the country's history and culture and a fantastic way to get lost in the music and movements. Korean Barbecue If you've never heard of Korean barbecue, forget everything you thought you knew about grilling. Gone are the days of hickory sauces and thick slabs of meat. The Korean style of gugugui or meat roasting is where it's at. The style first appeared in Korea between 37 BC and 668 AD, but was mostly forgotten during the country's shift towards vegetarian cuisine. But when meat-loving Mongols invaded in the 13th century and the Joseon dynasty was established in the 14th century, meat consumption became popular once again and Korean barbecue was reborn. If you visit a Korean barbecue restaurant, you'll typically find pork and beef on the menu. With bulgogi, beef marinated in soy sauce and sesame oil being a popular choice. What sets Korean barbecue apart from its Western counterpart is the thin slices of meat that allow for easy and quick cooking at your table. 
Many restaurants feature built-in grills, while others use portable tabletop grills. Don't be intimidated by the dozen or so extra dishes. They're meant to be enjoyed family style. To enjoy Korean barbecue like a pro, start by tossing garlic and kimchi slices onto the grill. Then take a lettuce leaf and make a wrap, adding rice and your choice of sauce. Once your meat, kimchi, and garlic are cooked, place them on your wrap, roll it up, and enjoy in one bite. Or if you're feeling more casual, just grab it straight off the grill. No judgment here, no public trash. According to a recent report, plenty of residents and tourists in Seoul struggle to find public trash bins causing frustration and inconvenience. One resident, Yuk Jimin, has resorted to carrying his trash in his backpack, hoping to find a bin before his snacks on the go turn his bag into a mini garbage dump. But sometimes he says he's left with no choice but to litter. Is it that hard to set up more trash cans, he asks. All of these problems can be taken care of if I just find more trash cans on the street. You see, the city of Seoul has a unique system in place that requires residents to buy special bags for their garbage. The bags are more expensive than regular ones, which discourages people from using public trash bins to bypass the system. While this has helped reduce the amount of waste, it also has led to a shortage of places to leave your garbage. Experts are calling for more trash cans to be installed, but they caution that it's important to do so strategically. Tourist-heavy areas certainly need more trash cans, but regular streets with fewer visitors or residents probably don't need as many. In the meantime, Seoul residents are left to fend for themselves, carrying their trash with them until they stumble upon a rare public trash bin. But hey, at least it's good exercise for those biceps. Studying till midnight. Night self-learning, or yegi in Korean, has taken South Korea by storm. It's a movement where people stay up late into the night to study or learn new skills, often in the comfort of their own homes. You're probably thinking, no big deal, I did that in college. But we're not just talking about students cramming for exams. People of all ages and backgrounds are participating in this nocturnal education craze. Why the late night study sessions? For many, it's a way to escape the distractions of daytime life, such as work or social obligations. Plus, there's something peaceful about studying while the rest of the world sleeps. It's like having the entire night to yourself to focus on personal growth and development. And the best part? You don't even have to leave your house. With online learning resources and video tutorials available at all hours, it's easy to dive into a new subject or skill from the comfort of your own bed. Want to learn how to code? No problem. Interested in cooking Korean cuisine? You got it. Of course, there are some downsides to night self-learning. Burning the midnight oil can lead to sleep deprivation and burnout, if you're not careful. Plus, your noisy neighbors might not be thrilled with your newfound passion for guitar playing at 2 a.m. But all in all, night self-learning is a fun and unique way to pursue your interests and passions on your own terms, just like many do in South Korea. So maybe the next time you're up late, you'll be inspired to learn something new as well. Cute Couples, Cute Clothes Matching outfits have become a popular trend among couples in South Korea, and it's not just limited to clothing. Some couples even coordinate their hairstyles and accessories. But why do they do it? Well, there are a few different reasons. One reason is that wearing matching outfits is seen as a way of showing unity and commitment in the relationship. By wearing the same clothes, couples can demonstrate that they're a team and that they share a strong bond. It's a way of saying, we're in this together. Another reason is that it's simply seen as cute and fun. Many couples enjoy the playful aspect of dressing alike and the attention it can bring. Plus, it can be a way of expressing their individual style while still being connected to each other. In addition, matching outfits are often seen as a way of celebrating special occasions, such as anniversaries or Valentine's Day. Couples might wear matching t-shirts or sweaters with a cute design or a message to mark the occasion. It's worth noting that the trend of wearing matching outfits isn't just limited to romantic couples. Oh no, friends and family members also take part in the trend as well. There are even matching outfits available for parents and their children, although dressing up kids in cute clothes is hardly uncommon. While the idea of wearing matching outfits may seem a bit over the top to some, a lot of people love to take part in this passion. Plenty of public restrooms if you ever find yourself in Korea, you may encounter some interesting bathroom customs. 
For starters, don't be alarmed if you don't see any toilet paper. Koreans typically use bidets and washlets instead of relying on good old TP. If you're not familiar with these fancy contraptions, no need to worry. For the most part, they're pretty easy to use once you get the hang of them. Just make sure you press the right buttons or you might get a surprise spray to the face. Another thing to keep in mind is that some public restrooms charge a small fee to use the facilities. This might seem strange at first, but think of it as paying for the privilege of using a clean, well-maintained bathroom. Plus, the fee is usually only a couple of hundred won, which is equivalent to a few cents in American cash. And speaking of public restrooms, you might be surprised by how clean they are. Koreans take pride in their hygiene, and you'll often see workers constantly cleaning and restocking the facilities. You might even find a little station with mouthwash and other toiletries for you to freshen up with. One last thing to note is that you should always bring your own toilet paper or tissues with you, just in case. While most bathrooms in Korea are well equipped with bidets and washlets, there's always a chance you'll encounter a restroom without any toilet paper at all. So be prepared and don't get caught off guard in the middle of a bathroom emergency. And there you have a small slice of Korean styles. Hopefully, you're only more intrigued by their differences in culture than being put off from ever trying them out for yourself. If you ever get the chance to visit Korea in its prime state, be sure to give some of the activities on your list a try and let us know how it goes.